Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is an interesting one that involves the internet and your search browser. It's by Big Potato Games, and it's called Weird Things Humans Search For, or a game about weird things humans search for. It's for 2 to 20 players. About 14 and up is what you need to be in order to play it, and it's for... 20 to maybe 40 minutes of play in the game weird things humans search for you're basically going to be uh, Dividing yourselves into teams or playing individually if you have less players and you're going to have somebody be an answer reader They're going to take one of these cards here That's on one team and the rest of the teams are then going to write down on a piece of paper that comes in the game uh, a first answer and then a bonus answer and I will say something like in the future there will be and then I will make a stop there. And on the card here, it'll tell you all the different lists. The first one is the most uh, popular one resulting on Google. And then the last one is the least, but they're all relevant searches. If you can get point, if you get any of these uh, answers on your scorecard, you're gonna gain points. And of course the first answer is worth the most in the first spot, the bonus spot's worth the second most, and then any other answer in any of the two categories is going to give you one point apiece. Uh, after that is done, you'll put one down, and then the, the, you're going to be part of the playing, and the next team is going to be doing the reading for the search cards. It's going to be a, about five rounds of play, and each team can score about zero to five points per round. After all five rounds are up, you're going to tally up the scores of the game and see who has the most points, and the person with or person or team with the most points will be the winner, uh, and we'll know the most interesting things about what weird things humans search for. A lot of these are interesting. I'll take you down below, I'll show you this what it comes included with, and then we'll go through a little bit of how the game works, and then I will give you my review. So here we have all the contents for weird things humans search for, and uh, it's going to come with basically two stacks of cards. As you can see, I didn't even open this stack because even though we played quite a few games, there's still more to go with this one here. It's also going to come with a blank slab of papers, which are basically going to be able to have the teams write on them, and then a singular uh, slab of papers for the team scores. You can have up to uh, five teams. I guess you can have even more if you want to use more pieces of paper. It shows five rounds, and then of course it has the scoring total at the very end. It'll come with some other fancy things that illustrate the different games that are included with Big Potato Games. A lot of their stuff is fun. It's especially the Chameleon, one of my favorites, uh, and of course the rule booklet that explains how to play the game as well as a uh, YouTube how to play, a tutorial. So anyway, that's pretty much what you're going to get in the game as well as this box here, which is very well done, very nicely made. Uh, so let's talk about the game. We'll move all of this stuff off the board. This is pretty much all you're going to need to play is a stack of these cards here, uh, teams, and of course pieces of paper. Every single team will get one of these pencils here, which you'll be using to write on these scorecards, and every team is going to get one of these pieces of paper. And then you're going to go ahead and write down the team names over here. I wrote some names down already. Team Team, Team Purple Vampires, Team Sparkle Kitty, so on and so forth. One of the teams will take one of these cards here. We'll select one I already didn't read yet. Uh, this one right here. And is going to read it out loud. I always dream of and then blank. Each team is then going to have one of these slabs of paper and they're going to write down a main answer and a bonus answer. After everybody's done that, I think it's also timed, uh, you're going to read off all the way around the table and the, uh, the judge the judge team will go ahead and score you points on whether you guessed correctly. If the first result is in your main answer, you're going to get four points. And if any other result is in your main answer, instead of that one, you'll gain one point. In your bonus answer, if your first result, if the first result is in there, you're going to gain two points. And if any other answer is one. So it's likely you're going to get zero to five points. Four and one, two and three. As long as you get that first result, you can get some points there. After that is done, then uh, they are going to discard the card, and then you're going to add all the tallying of all the points, and the next uh, judging team is going to go, or the next uh, announcer team, I guess, is what you would say. So let's go ahead and do one together, okay? So this one says, is Mars, dot, dot, dot. So is Mars the planet? And everybody's going to go ahead and write down things. Of course, it's Google, and the search results are bizarre, so if you got any of these, think about it. Is Mars, what would you ask? Well... Is Mars bigger than Earth? That would be the first response. Hot or cold, habitable, smaller than Earth, in retrograde, a gas planet, a planet, warming, dead, or dangerous. Those would be all correct answers. Anything else would give you zero points. And that's the basic idea of the game. You'll have five rounds of this and a score at the end of the game, and whoever has the most is the winner. There's quite a few of these cards here that have a lot of cool, interesting aspects. We'll come up together and do a little bit of playing together with this game, and then I'll tell you what I think about it and uh, whether or not you should pick it up. Okay, so weird things human search for. Let's go ahead and pick a card here. This one here is our mustaches. Well, our mustaches. Go ahead and 
what's the first thing that comes into your head? If you want, you can write it in the comment section below. If you don't want to write a comment, fine, just think about it. And now I will go ahead and give you the answer. Are mustaches cool? That'd be the first answer if you got that right. Well done. Making a comeback in style, professional, gay, creepy, allowed in the army, attractive, out of, my, uh, out of style, or manly. Those are the different ones there. And how about one more? Can loud noises. Can loud noises make your ears bleed, cause dizziness, make you deaf, trigger vertigo, break glass, cause labor, trigger seizures in dogs, kill a guinea pig, cause earwax, scare my unborn baby. Okay, so this is basically the game. You're just trying to write down answers you think are the most appropriate based on what you think other people have put down based on Google Analytics search history. Uh, if you actually look up in Google, it will tell you the exact searches found. You will actually see them for what they are. Some of them are so bizarre that you wouldn't believe it. Is it obvious when your water breaks? Like that's the first thing that comes to on Google search. So people put that in as opposed to anything else. Yes, yes they did indeed. The game is fun, it's enjoyable. I like this kind of a game because it makes you think about other people. It adds a little bit of psychology to it and it adds a fun party atmosphere involved with the game. It is tame and it is fun. There are a few things that get a little, uh, a little, uh, Risque, I guess. Is it obvious when a condom breaks or you miscarry? Those are things that are a little more, you know, a little, a little darker, I suppose. But they're not necessarily sexual in nature. Uh, it's all based on search results, so that's kind of how it's going to go. And all of them are going to be a little different. Uh, I've played this game many times. It's very, very fun and very enjoyable. Uh, and speaking of this game, before we jump into any more of the review for this, I want to talk about another game, and that one is called Search History. Uh, this one here specifically is the same type of game in which everybody is going to get their own answer booklets. There's a whole bunch of them that will be in, come included here, as well as there's going to be a load of cards. And in this game specifically, you're just going to be drawing a card and then reading one of the three different options based on the top card of the deck. This one is a blue one, so I would read of the red, yellow, or blue. I'd read the blue one here. And then it would say, what is the last thing to happen, dot, dot, dot. And then in which people would go ahead and write down their answers. And then I would read it out loud. The, the most high, the top search uh, result was during puberty. Per, yeah, during puberty. In which case, um, basically players would actually guess who wrote what answer. And if you submitted the correct answer, you'd get points. And if you turned in the correct answer, you would get points. And that's how you're going to score in the game. It'll also come with a big score pad. And it plays very similar to uh, weird things humans search for. This one specifically here is the Not Safe for Work edition. So it has quite a few, uh, quite a few more risque topics if you're more interested in a game like this but has something a little darker and something that involves not only guessing what is the research result but what other people you think what what you think other people would uh assume the search result would be so how dirty are your friends whereas weird things humans search for is going to be more on the lines of of these 10 or, or so different answers that are all correct did you get any of them are you just searching for the correct answer uh, there's also a uh, safer for work search history game, if that's what uh, floats your fancy. But overall, they're two games that are very similar in their own way. Uh, and for me personally, I think the more family version of the game is going to be played more with more family ass people. And uh, there is going to be a niche market for search history, the not safe for work edition, if you're playing with some older people. It's definitely going to be the Cards Against Humanity crowd that's going to be playing search history uh whereas weird things human see search for is probably going to be in target if it's not actually already there and it's something that i think a lot of people are going to pick up just because of the it's it's just it's just enough of crazy but not too far this one goes a little over the deep end but uh, personally, I like something that goes a little more in, in, in into the uh, not safe for work category. I think those are a little more fun when it comes to getting to know new people. Both games are great for that aspect, and both games have their own mm, uh, different clientele, I suppose, as you would say. But either way, uh, I think you're going to determine whether this is a game for you. If you like party games, if you want the not safe for work or the safe for work version, or you want to try the, uh, if you like the idea of search history better, but you still want something that's more family friendly and whatnot, then of course there is 
is the uh, safe for work version of that game as well. But I liked all of these games. They're all very fun. I enjoy thinking about what other people think about, and this is going to come down into that atmosphere as well. They're quick, they're easy to pull out, and they're nice filler games. Definitely going to give my thumbs up for Weird Things Humans Search For, as well as our bonus game, Search History, and of course, Search History Not Safe for Work. Anyway, that's all I got for you this time, and as always, guys, I love you, and I look forward to searching for weird things on the internet with you next time.